Hello there viewers, welcome to AppSheet and more. In this video, we're going to be learning how we can use AppSheet to create an accounting software. We know every business needs to track their income and expenses, and it's very useful to know how you can use AppSheet to create something that best suits your needs. So in this series, we're going to learn how we can create our very own accounting software with AppSheet. We're going to learn so many things. We're going to learn how to create your own GL, on trial balance, pass your debit and credit, get your income statement and your balance sheet. So if you are excited, join me. Let's do this in AppSheet. Okay, guys, so let's get started. So in this video, we're going to preview the application we want to build. That's an accountant software application with AppSheet. So I'm going to walk you through what we are looking at building and then we'll start off from there. Okay, so right here, what we have is the accountant software. We have our chart of accounts. The chart of accounts is basically a list of all your lines in your accounting um, application, your accounting um, statement. So right here, we have our revenue. And over here in our revenue, we have the total revenue, which is going to hold all our totals. Then you have your various revenue lines over here. You have your fixed costs. You have your other income. You have your cost of sales. You have your current assets. You have your current expenses and so on and so forth. You also have that option to add a new line that has to belong to any of these as well. And then we'll come here to our trial balance. So basically, a trial balance is the closing balance of the various lines in your statement, both balance sheets and your income statement. At the end of the day, they should balance. So that's why it's called the trial balance. So you have over here total this and that, right? And then we come over here to our statements, right? So over here, we have a year selector or a period selector. In our video or in the app we're going to build, I'm thinking of changing this from a year selector to a period selector. So you have a start period and an end period, and it's going to sum everything in between. Then you have your income statements. These are your revenue lines, other income, cost of sales, and your expenses. And then this gives you your, your profits. When you come here to balance sheets, you have the various balance sheet lines all the way flowing to your, your equity. Now you realize that the profit over here that you make here, 23905, flows into your equity in the form of retained earnings and then this gives you your total equity and liability summing up to what your total assets so that's a balance sheet and that should balance right if you move on to a next year 2026 ideally per the way statements are prepared your income statement should only have values within that year whilst your balance sheet should be cumulative so over here you can see my income statement has only one entry i just made one entry of 300,000 as inpatient and then that flows all the way to profit of 300,000. But then you notice that my balance sheet hasn't changed that much. The only thing that has changed, or one of the significant things that has changed, is the retained earnings changed from 231, as you saw in 2025, to 531. That's this 300 in addition, right? Also, I think bank increased by the same 300,000 because the payments were made in the form of bank, right? So that's a good thing about having this. You can see the interactiveness between the various lines of the statement. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass some entries for 2025 and 2026, and you're going to see how it's going to affect the statement. So we'll come here to the third aspect, which is the pass entry section over here. All you need to do is to select the year entry date. So in this case, let me just make an entry for 15th of um, August 2025. This is a transaction ID. This is automated. And then this is the entry date. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to say, um, there are no, in, there are no, um, let's check again. There are no fixed assets. So let's purchase a fixed asset. Let's say medical equipment with bank. Let's say, come over here. I'm just going to purchase medical equipment from diseased to disease enterprise something like this right so one and one i'm going to come over here so once you have this selected you click on this icon and then you just select okay so purchase so that means medical equipment is going to be debited right because an asset 
So I'm going to debit this by 200,000. And then I'm going to credit bank, which is the asset I'm using to pay for this by 200,000. So you notice debit is 200,000, credit is also 200,000, right? So as I click save, a number of things have to happen. So this is a bit of a slow process. So it's going to run, it's going to enter these transactions into the geo, and then we're going to have our accounts prepared nicely. So we come over here, this should sync in shortly. And then once it's, it runs, you should see the updates over here. Good. So you see medical equipment 200,000, bank reduced by 200,000. So from 700,000 to 500,000, and then you still have this balancing and everything is what is looking sweet, right? So well, that is one thing. We can pass other transactions for other years and then it will still run and everything will still flow in nicely. So this is the journey we want to embark on. And let's see how we can start off from scratch by creating our spreadsheet for this application. Let's go. Mm -hmm.